We're talking about success, prosperity, and the power of purpose. And I want to share with you right now that you have a purpose. Now, I know you may think your life is just mundane. It's just here to do whatever, and there's no real rhyme or reason, no real meaning. You're just trying to make it. Well, I want to say to you, there's more to life than making it. There is a reason why God selected you to be born in this generation. There's a reason why God has you in the earth today. And there is someone, some group, some cause, some movement that you are supposed to lead. You are supposed to be a part of, a significant part of, a vital part of. There's some contribution that you must make so that your divine purpose is fulfilled. You say, Brian, how do you even figure out what the heck that is? Well, here's my thing. It takes intentionality. It takes a desire to know. And in my case, I'll tell you flat out, I've invested some money. I've invested some time. I've bought some, some programs on audio and on video to help me walk out the process. And I encourage you to do the same. You have to invest in yourself. But over the years, I've discovered something. That the, the clearer I become about who I am and why I'm here, the more opportunities open up for me. The clearer I become on my next step and my next, uh, my next season and the next course of action in my life as it relates to my purpose, the more things tend to show up on my doorstep by way of opportunities. So you say, well, I'm stuck right now. Well, I'm telling you, you're opportunity-less. And so in order to get beyond that stuck place, you have to discover more about who you are and why you're here. I say, Brian, what is your purpose? Well, let me share it with you. I'm going to have to read it off of my device here, but this is a, the long version, the long-form version of, of why I believe I'm here. I am here, and my purpose is to awaken dreams, to unlock potential, and to activate the strategic purpose of every individual that I come into contact with by loving them to life, leading them on a journey of personal healing, and personal discovery by coaching them in their pursuit of what they were created to do. And I summarize it by saying it like this. I am a servant leader. I am a teacher and a coach. And I'm a shepherd of hearts. That is my purpose. How would I kind of make that a synopsis? I believe that my purpose is to help you become everything that God has created you to be by discovering who you are by healing the broken places in your life, and by being developed as a leader that will and can and should change the world that you live in. So purpose. I encourage you today to separate yourself from the noise, from the busyness, long enough to hear from God on who He says you are. Here's a story that I'm going to leave you with today that I find fascinating. In the Bible, we see this picture where a woman is pregnant with twins. The Bible tells us about these twins that they were literally warring inside of her womb. They were fighting for position. And when it came time for this woman to give birth to these two children, the Bible says that one, whose name was Esau, came out first. The Bible says that, I love this description, he was red and he was hairy all over. Wouldn't you like that to be your legacy? But interesting thing about this is, as he was exiting the womb and being born into the world, the parents noticed that the other child was holding on to his heel. And the Bible says when they observed this, the Bible says, so they named him Jacob. Notice this. The parents made an observation, and from that observation they perceived what they believe to be true about a child, because the name Jacob means heel grabber. It means usurper. It means deceiver. It means supplanter. It means a person who's going to weasel his way into everything he ever gets in life. So based on what someone thought they saw in this newborn child, they imposed an identity on him that would haunt him for the next number of years. You know the story... They grow up together. Jacob was kind of a soft guy. He was always in the house, always tending to his father's business. Esau was the hunter. He was the outdoorsman. He was the aggressive guy. 
And one day, Jacob had cooked this beautiful meal, and Esau had been out hunting all day. He was hungry, and he came in and says, man, I'm starving. Can you hook me up with some, some stuff here? And Jacob, remember, heel grabber. He was functioning out of his identity. He said, oh, I'll give you, man, I'll give, you can eat from the buffet if you want to, but in exchange for that, I want your birthright. I want the blessing of our father as the firstborn. Because I believe personally that Jacob should have been the firstborn. I believe Esau moved out of position and got in front of Jacob. And Jacob should have been the rightful firstborn. You know the story. Took his birthright, received his father's blessing. Years later, torment, all kinds of fighting between the two guys. Years later, Jacob has this encounter, man. He's sleeping and he... He is at a place where angels are ascending and descending. He begins to, this angel comes to visit him and he begins to wrestle with this angel, fight with this angel. Sun's about to break and the angel says, I'm, I've got to go. The sun's coming up. Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Understand this. Jacob had already received the most prolific blessing that a son, a Hebrew son, could ever receive. That was the blessing of the father, the blessing of the firstborn. He had, already, he had the blessing. But he says, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And here's what the angel said. What is your name? Who do you think you are? The angel didn't say, well, what kind of a blessing do you want? Do you want a new car, a new chariot, new horses? What do you want? No. The answer was, what is your name? Who do you think you are? So my name's Jacob. They call me heel grabber, supplanter, deceiver, crooked. That's what they call me. And the angel, which we know to be God himself, said, not anymore. You should have never been called that. You should have, Jacob wasn't your name. From today, you're going to be called Israel because you have encountered God and you have persisted. So what's that story about? Here's my piece on it. I don't believe God changed Jacob's name. I believe that this encounter with God revealed to Jacob the name he should have always had. Sometimes we behave like the person that somebody else said we are. Sometimes we, we do things. We, we go to school. We get a good job. And we just go about our life because someone else expects that of us. I want to challenge you. Who are you? And why are you here? What is your purpose? What's waiting right now on the inside of you? Jacob became the father of nations. But he would have never done so if he was functioning in the identity that was given to him by someone else. You have a purpose. You have a calling. You are great. So be that person. My name is Brian Holmes. Thanks for joining us today on this episode. I look forward to seeing you again right here very soon.